And despite that, Malgré the cela, party leaders continued to accelerate the great leap forward. Le grand bond en avant. They set a rice production quote of three tons per hectare, de de which they later hectare. increased to three and a half tons. Ont par la suite augmenté they à pushed a weak famine population ah. to work even harder famille, plus dur, to build yet more and bigger dams. Important irrigation projects such as the Terpent Mall and First Genuary Dams were designated hot battlefields. Simply put, the people were made to suffer by being forced to work too hard without adequate food or medical care. Sans avoir assez à manger et sans soins médicaux suffisants. The two accused played an instrumental role Les in this through speeches and political education sessions in which they instructed cadres and workers to implement and follow the party plans as set out in detail in the co-prosecutor's trial brief. Both Nguyen Chi and Kyu Sun Pon conducted political education sessions on the Great Leap Forward policy. They helped to ensure the organization of cooperatives, the implementation of the three tons per hectare policy, and the building of dams and canals at the pace expected by the party. They demanded that a famished, exhausted population work even harder to fulfill and overfulfill the party's annual plan at the same time that they imposed food rations on those workers. At a political education session attended by civil party I'm Un, both Kyusun Pon and Nguyen Chia told the party cadres that workers who pretended to be sick should be considered enemies who were betraying the party. Kyusun Pon also instructed the cadres on how oppressive work and living conditions could be used to draw out the party's enemies. Slide 11. This is what I'm Un told this court about Kyusun Pon's speech. And I would like, I still recall what he told us the, and the political lines at the time. They wanted to uncover the enemy borrowing from within, and in doing so, we had to assign much hard labor, we had to give them a lot of work, little food to eat, so that we could uncover the enemies from within. This is what he mentioned in the session. I was rather terrified myself, and my colleagues were a bit terrified upon hearing that statement. Other witnesses described similar political education sessions in which the accused branded as enemies those who did not work hard enough or were lazy. The accused themselves have admitted how the party's extreme work plans caused hardship and suffering amongst the people. In an October 20, uh, 2007 France, interview with The Voice of America, Kyusum Vaughan was asked to explain the uh, reason people sent to the countryside were on forced into slave labor and starved to death. La population envoyée dans la campagne a été forcée à travailler comme des esclaves et à former jusqu'à ce que mort s'en suive. In response, he noted that countries like China and Vietnam had produced less than 
one ton of rice per hectare per year. So Cambodians had to work harder in order to achieve the minimum three tons of rice per hectare per year. He then described describing his thinking during the regime as to hardship that had to be imposed on the Cambodian people in order to achieve the party's plan. These are his words. Slide 19. I realized that we would not be able to reach this goal unless we fully irrigated the rice field and transplanted the rice seedling three times a year. Regarding the rice yield, we anticipated that we would achieve this within three or four years if we worked hard regardless of being ill. They had to work. Slide 22, please. They had to work harder and run faster, often reciting run faster and faster. Liberation could not be successful if they were late even by a day or two. Then you can imagine what would have happened. I do not need to say much. They ran with starvation. Let's think. Some were running with starvation, while some were running with less food. They lacked rice and medicines. I was managing the medicines. Nguyen Chia also has acknowledged in his interviews that the CPK's great leap forward policy was too fast and that the party's requirements for the people were too high. Slide 28. In a January 2007 interview, the accused told a German reporter, we wanted too much, too fast. We aimed too high. Our requirements for the people were too high. We thought we had to develop the country very quickly. Slide 31. And in his interviews with Tetsambad, Nguyen Chia made a similar admission, stating our regime may have been destroyed because we walked too fast and the great leap forward was very fast. We probably walked faster than the people wanted. They wanted to eat with their families, not in the cooperatives. How have the accused defended themselves against these charges? Most often, they have claimed they did not know of the suffering of the people they governed, that they did not know people were starving, that they were being worked to the point of death. But we have proven in this trial that they did not, they did know. They knew everything. They were Anka, the pineapple with many eyes that could see everything. Both Nguyen Chia and Kyo Som Phan traveled Nguyen throughout the country Phan. and often parcouru, visited work sites and cooperatives, including the specific sites that are the basis for the criminal charges in this case, as I will discuss shortly. In this courtroom on the 13th, of December 2011, Nguyen described how on one of his trips he saw workers walking through the rice fields at 4 a.m. in the morning. The late King Father Norodom Sehenu gave a number of interviews describing his trips to the countryside with Kyo Pond 
in which he made it very clear that the enslavement of the Cambodian people in miserable, inhumane conditions was readily apparent. In this film clip, you will hear one of those accounts. Please uh, project video number two. projeter la vidéo numéro two. I, as head of state, traveled through my country, through Cambodia, together with Kyo Sampan. There are, I but saw the communes were concentration camps. I saw how work went on day and night. When the moon shone, people could not sleep. Sleep was not allowed. People had to work. I saw what people ate, for there was no rice. The rice was mixed with maize and other things, beans, even leaves, the chopped up stalks of banana plants. The diet was very, very bad. Your Honours, what Norodom Sihanouk saw during his trips, Kyo Sampan could also see. Kyo Sampan aurait aussi pu le voir. The co-prosecutors have also proven the regime of reporting that was in effect during the decay period, pursuant to which detailed written rap reports were regularly sent by telegram or messenger from every zone and DK organization to the party center leaders in Phnom Penh. Despite the efforts of the Khmer Rouge leaders to destroy all documents before fleeing, Phnom Penh in January 1979, some of those records did survive. And they prove beyond any doubt that Nunchia killed some pawn and the other party center leaders in Phnom Penh were informed by zone leaders of the arrest and killings in their regions. They were told that the people in the countryside faced disease and starvation due to insufficient food supplies and overwork. As a few examples of this, on the 2nd of April 1976, Central Zone Secretary Kai Po reported that among the people in the entire zone there has been much fever and diarrhea due to working and overheating, and he proposed reducing work hours. Like other reports to the center, Kaipo's report was distributed to Nuanjia, Office 870, and the center's document archive file. Unfortunately, it is clear from the testimony of those who worked at the 1st January Dam in 1977, that the CPK leaders in Phnom Penh were not sympathetic to Kai Pearl's request that the work hours be reduced, slide 34. In May 1977, the Northwest Zone reported to Ankara that there were shortages in many regions and that most of the base people in that zone were only receiving thin rice soup. 
une soupe de riz clair. In June that same year, en juin de la même année, the South West zone reported la that some districts and certain communes certain had encountered shortages connu des pénuries. and that people in Kampot, Kampong Spu Et and Kakao Kampot, had Spu cholera Et and some had died. Avec le choléra, et certains étaient Slice 36. Diapositif 36. On 10 January 1978, North Zone Secretary Gong Jia Alias Sai reported to Committee 870 that this year in Prebihir sector, in the majority of places, there is starvation. And in May 1978 report from Northwest Zone Secretary Ru Nyum to Anka 870, Nyum reported that rice supplies to Sector 5 had already run out, and Sector 1 and 4 would be out by the following month. The accused received these reports not only in writing, but also from the regular meetings held at the K1 Party Center Leadership Office in Phnom Penh, at which Zone and some sector leaders Donc, came to report on their regions de secteur, and to receive uh, instructions from the center. De la situation dans leur région. Your Honours heard testimony about these meetings Monsieur from the cadres who worked at the K1 office. Namely, Eun Tan, the head of the K1, inner guard unit at K1, So Tung, Nguyen Chi is a personal bodyguard and messenger, K1 guard, Savi, and Seng Li a K1 guard and nephew of Pol Pot. These witnesses all confirm that zone and sector leaders came for regular meetings in Phnom Penh with Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, Kyosong Pon, and the other center leaders. And you heard testimony from the one surviving zone or sector leader who came for such meetings, namely Sao Zerun, the former secretary of Autonomous Sector 105, sector who described 105, his trips to Phnom Penh for meetings at which he met with and reported to Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, Kyu Son Pon, and Son Sen. Furthermore, even amongst uh, the small number of surviving minutes of the standing committee meetings uh, from the first half of 1976, we have documentary evidence proving slide 38 that these meetings took place the minutes of a meeting held on 8 March 1976 at which the Deputy Secretary of the North Zone and the Secretaries of Siem Reap and Bravihir sectors came to Phnom Penh to report on rice production, food supplies, construction of dams and canals, the health of the people, and arrests of enemies in their regions. Who were the center leaders that they met with and reported to? Slide 39, number one, com Comrade Secretary, that is Pol Pot. Number two, Comrade Deputy Secretary, that is Nguyen Chia. Number three, Comrade Haim Kiyosem Pon. And number four, Comrade Duen, that is Su Vasi alias Duen, the person that Kiyosem Pon admits was the other le member Christian along with him on the Office 870 Committee. Avoir été membre qui avec lui au the minutes du 810. record that Siem Reap Sector 106 Secretary Sot reported to Réunion. Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, 
kill some fawn and do an on the situation with the paddy dike system on the right harvest, on the livelihood of the people and the enemy situation, slide 40, the problems of, the, of many sick people in the work sites, a loss of 40% of the labor force, and there have been outbreaks of chicken pox and cholera, slide 41. Grab here, Sector 103, Secretary Hong reported to the CPK leaders that many of the brothers and sisters of people in the work sites are ill and have fevers. He also reported that 100 people trying to plead had been arrested since January. In response to these reports, the sector secretaries were instructed to build more dikes and to ration food supplies. Mr. President, Your Honours, based on all the evidence, it is clear beyond any reasonable doubt that Nguyen Chia, Kiu Song Phong, Pol Pot and other party centers leaders in Phnom Penh knew of and had the ultimate control over the work and living conditions to which people in DK cooperatives and work sites were subjected to. I will now turn to the specific crime sites that are the subject of this trial. There is Trapeant Mall. And now I, the co-prosecutor will present Trapeant Mall Dam. Slide 42. The Trapeant Mall Dam was built by sector and district mobile workforces in Phnom Stok and Prenet Prep districts of Sector 5 of the Southwest Zone. The first phase of this massive dam, which including a 14-kilometer long dike on the east side of the reservoir and a 8.5-kilometer dike on the south side, was built in a few months during the first half of 1977. Workers were instructed by the site supervisor Tawal that the dam had to be completed in 1977 in order to achieve the great leap forward. Slide 45. And at the time of the official inauguration of the dam in December 1977, North West Zone Secretary Rohingya noted that the dam had been built in response to the call of the CBK Central Committee to build water projects in a big way. Slide 42. In this courtroom on the 29th of May 2013, in response to a question from a civil party, Kilsom Pond admitted that he had visited the Topeng Mall site. After describing the great leap forward policy that had been adopted by the CPK Central Committee in May 1975, the accused said, and I quote, we built dams and canals in a speedier process, and I myself witnessed that in 1976, when I had the opportunity to leave Phnom Penh, I saw canals and dams, including Topentmo Dam and the one to the west of Badambal. As for the Topentmo Dam, it looked like a sea in the middle of the field, where there used to be dry land. Kilsong Phong also admitted his visit to the Topentmo Dam in his book Cambodia's recent history, in which he described himself as obsessed by the dam reservoir complexes.
the Topengtmo work site was visited by other CPK leaders, including Pol Pot. Pol Pot. It is a site whose construction was regularly reported on in the Northwest Zones report to Office 870. It is a site whose construction the center leaders knew well enough to describe in precise detail in the July-August 1977 issue of Revolutionary Youth. La jeunesse révolutionnaire de juillet août 1977. During this trial, your honors heard Lors testimony procès, from 15 former Topengmo workers and cadres, including the former deputy de chief of the Sector 5 mobile units, a number of company chiefs, and one of the guards assigned de to de compagnie, the work site. Their testimony, corrob corroborated Leur by numerous Leur other witness interviews, proves the crimes perpetrated at this site for which the accused have been charged. As for the case with other work sites that were Comme part of the CBK's regret lead forward, the workers at the Topentmo Dam worked long hours, morning, day, and night, with little rest. Slide 49. Sands upon. Sotsopal. And some All described being woken before dawn as early as 3 or 4 a.m. and working until 10 or 11 p.m. at night. Yi Lai So testified that her unit had to work every single evening. And Lord Sui, who worked as a guard at the site, confirmed that people worked at night every day until the dam project was completed. Company chief Chom Seng testified that during period of intense offensives, workers sometimes worked around the clock without any rest for two or three days in a row. The long work hours imposed on the workers was something observed by Kyu Songphon on his trips to see Topiang Tmo and other work sites in the provinces. Slide 55. In his book, Considerations on the History of Cambodia, Kyu Songphon provided the following description of what he saw during his, those visits. I recall the gathering up of the people to build dams and Je dig feeder canals. They rang bells to wake up the people at 3 or 4 a.m. In the afternoon, they ate communally, and the work was not even finished by midnight. During their 15-plus hour work days, the people assigned to the Topentmo site were forced to perform difficult back-breaking work, slide 58. Most were tasked to dig the earth using holes, then to carry baskets with 20 to 40 kilograms of dirt to the top of 10-meter high dam embankments. À 40 kg de terre Their usual daily de quota was to dig and carry three cubic meters of earth. Leur quota Multiple witnesses testified that they were threatened with punishment, including food deprivation, deprivation if they failed to meet their work quotas. The meals fed to the Tropiantmo workers 
but not remotely sufficient les repas servis aux ouvriers de trois plein étaient loin de suffire vu Most que leur travail était physiquement très exigeant. La plupart des repas étaient faits d'un petit bol de bouillie. Parfois, ils recevaient du riz cuit. Samsak a dit dans son témoignage qu'il était parfois tellement flingué par la faim qu'il se sentait prêt à donner sa vie pour...